Hey boys and girls, my name is Steven. Vince is behind the camera there. We're from the Sandia Mountain Natural History Center. What we're gonna do today is learn about ecosystems. So, if you have a paper already printed, or if you have a blank piece of paper, what I'd like you to do is just write the title, Ecosystems, up at the top. Eco... Systems. I want you to look at that word for just a second and figure out what the word inside that word is. Did you think of systems? We're going to focus just on that for a second. System. We use systems all the time and we're part of a system. Many systems. And there are many systems in nature as well. Think for a couple seconds about other systems you either use at home, for school, for fun, or systems that you know about already that's uh, in nature. Fact, if you have just eaten, you might be using one of those systems right now. The digestive system. So when you eat, What's the first thing you do? Put the food in your mouth. And you chew. Are those teeth kind of helping out your digestive system? Yeah, they're the first part. And then the juice in there, sal saliva, kind of softens the food up. And when it's ready, you swallow. What's that food tube called? Your esophagus. As it travels down your esophagus, obviously it's going to go into your stomach. And you have more juices in there. Acids. That works on your digestion. Travels through your intestines. And obviously, you're going to poop it out sometime, right? So, that system is not just one part. There's a whole bunch of parts in it. I don't know how many offhand, but there's more than one, right? So, think about this. What is shining on me right now? The sun. Is there a system that the sun is part of? Yeah, the solar system. No matter where you are in the universe or the galaxy, there will always be at least one of those suns in the middle of it. Now, what orbits the sun? Planets. And what can orbit a planet? A moon. And then pieces of rock out there? Asteroids. What holds it all together? Gravity. So. All those parts, the sun or suns, the planets, the moons, the asteroids, and the gravity are all parts of that system. Those parts together work as a whole. Last system. What am I doing? Typing on a keyboard. So what kind of system are we talking about? Computer system. We look at a screen. What's this? Mouse. And then, not every time, but lots of times, how is everything connected to each other? Cords or wires. Again, not just one part, but a whole bunch. There's a word I want you to think about. It means more than one. Not a few. Not many. But it does start with M. Here's a symbol for the math function. Multiply, multiple. So there's multiple parts. Every system has multiple parts. So what we're going to do, since we're talking about ecosystems, is first, on your paper, draw a big T, just like that. So what we have right now is a T chart, or at least the beginning of a T chart. How many groups are we going to have? Two. So. What we're going to do is we're going to zoom back in a second so that you can see what's kind of around me and behind me. Or you can go to a window and look out the window wherever you're at. And uh, if there's a natural area, trees or plants or something like that outside your window, you can do that too. So Vince, go ahead, zoom out so we can look at everything. So you should be able to see all this stuff around me. Maybe even some stuff on the ground. Um, and if you can, like I said, go to a window too. You can check things out that way as well. And what you're going to do 
is look for anything that's a natural thing. So, is a car out your window going to count? Uh-uh. Is a uh, sidewalk? No. No, we're not going to count the sidewalk. Just the stuff like you might see around here. The stuff on the ground, the stuff up here that's growing, natural things. So for about 10 seconds or so, I want you to do that. Did you notice a few things? All right, I did. So what we're gonna do, we are going to list those things and make our two groups. And then after we have a few things on each side, we're gonna figure out what we should call those things. Maybe you can figure it out before I help you out um, when you see a pattern happening. So, right behind me, what is this thing? It's a tree. Now that tree has these things on there. Here's some short ones from one kind of a tree. Here's some long ones from another one that's like that tree, but a little bit different. What are these? Needles. What kind of tree did they come from? Pine tree. On the right side here, I would like you to write pine tree. do we see? The ground? Well, what's on the ground? Around here, there's a whole bunch of these rocks. This kind of rock has an orangish color to it. This kind of rock is called sandstone. Sandstone is going to go on the other side. So let's write sandstone. Maybe wherever you are, you might have looked out a window and seen the green stuff on the ground. What's that? Yeah, it's grass. What side do you think grass is gonna go on? The rock side or the tree side? What's it most like? Yeah, a tree. So let's go ahead and put grass with the pine tree. I don't know if you can hear them, I hear some things up in the sky. We might see them down in town. They make like a raw, raw, raw sound. Um, they're black and they fly. They're kind of big. Crows. Now, crows are not like trees. They're not like grass. They're definitely not like a rock. But what side are they most like? What do they have most in common with? Plants or rocks? I hope you said plants. So, let's put crows, since that's what we're listening to. All right, one last, not one last thing, but almost. Take a breath in. What'd you breathe in? Air. What do you think? Is air like trees and birds? Or is it like rock? It's kind of like none of those things, right? But it does have something in common with one of these things. Because I said one thing, you might look at the side that has just one thing. So yes, air is going to go on the side with sandstone. Alright, now, let me ask you. Can rocks ever be alive? No. Could air ever be alive? No. Do living things need air? Yeah, like we just did, we breathed, right? How about a pine tree? Can it be alive? Of course. Grass? Yes. Crows? Yes. That is a big difference between these two sides, isn't it? Now I'm gonna have you think of something. This. What is this thing? Branch, right? Is it alive or is it dead? It's dead. 
Now, let's see if that'll stand up right there. Perfect. What side is that dead branch going to go on? These things that have never been alive? Or these things that are alive? These things that are not alive right now? These things that are growing? It's going to go on the side with the trees and the bird. So, let's write dead branch. Now, that branch is dead. Why did it go on the side with things that are alive? This is why. There's only one way that this branch could have ever gotten here on Earth, and that's by doing what at the very beginning? Seed falls, it starts to grow. It grows big, turns into a tree, branch breaks off for some reason, the branch dies. So, because that branch used to be alive, that's why it's going on this side with the trees and the grass and the birds. Now we have to figure out what to call these two things. Things that are not alive, things that are alive, but can also be dead. I'm going to write three letters right here. B, I, O. That's not all of it yet. But that's the beginning of it. What does bio mean? Bio is in a lot of words. There's a scientist, a certain kind of scientist, they're called biologists. Starts with B-I-O. Do you know what they learn about, what they study? Yeah, living things. Animals, plants, little tiny cells. How about a biography? It's a story. But what's it about? Is it true or is it fiction? Is it fiction or non-fiction? It's non-fiction, which means it's real life and it's about a person's life. So here we have biologists that study life. A biography is a story about a person's life. These things are all alive or they used to be. So, in an ecosystem, things that are alive or dead like the trees growing or the dead branch, are called biotic. These things here, the air and the sandstone, they can never ever be alive. We're going to call them almost the same, but with one letter difference, abiotic. That A in abiotic, it just means not, not biotic. They can never be alive or they can never be dead. So, next thing. This is what you guys can do at home or wherever you are, on your own or with a grown-up. Keep this list that we've been making, but I want, you to I want to challenge you to get 10, at least 10 new things on your list. It doesn't matter if you have three more abiotic things or seven biotic things or one and nine. You just need 10 altogether. So, with your grown-up's permission, you're going to go outside. Maybe you can go around your house, wherever you are, if um, there's too much traffic or something outside. Look for as many biotic things as you can. Things that have been alive, maybe. Go to your kitchen. I'm sure there's some things in there that you can find. And then other things that are abiotic, things that can never be alive. All right. So... Get those 10 new things, and we'll see you next time for an expanded new version of this.